Alright, someone watching this video has some ice cream and you're not sharing and I'm very disappointed in you. Hey guys, welcome back to Spike. I'm Kai and today we are back once again taking a look at this breakdown of a scene that I recently made. I really love it so I decided to share it with you guys. Um, I was just making some random title stuff because I love doing titles in uh, Blender, so that's what that's what I've done. And uh, this is basically the um, this is basically the scene here. It has a little bit of depth of field in the beginning and the end, so it's gonna lag a little bit, but um, has a little bit of depth of field, kind of up close to the camera, spins around, you know, boom, couple bullets. I think that's pretty cool. And then uh, depth of field kind of changes a little bit, and then it comes back to the camera, and then it it, uh, it basically loops. So I think that's a really really cool scene. Um, it looks kind of complex, but there's not actually that much going on. Actually, it didn't look that too complex, to be honest with you, but there's not too much going on here. But there's just some really cool things that I wanted to touch on um, and maybe share with you guys. So, specifically the bullets and um, some of the stuff I did with the depth of field. So, for let's break this down a couple a couple pieces. Alright, so first of all, I'm in material mode, not render mode. So, render mode looks like that. It's just solid black, which also looks good. But I really liked the like gray kind of background that this had. So, this... This area right here, I really, really enjoyed that a lot. So this is basically, if you hit this little drop down right here, and it, when you're on material mode, and you click this little circle right here, you can have all these different um, HDRIs, which is basically what this is. It's just lighting, it just lights your scene. Um, but it's only good for material mode. So I chose this one right here, and I just changed the strength, uh, the world opacity all the way up, the blur, um, and the rotation to like eight, negative 8.8 .8 or whatever. So it just has a nice little background to it, which I really enjoyed. Um, and then the next biggest thing, of course, is of course the actual text itself. So what the text does without depth of field is this. Basically, you can see, um, it kind of just rotates, boom, slams right there. Some bullets come out, and then uh, it just uh, it just comes closer to the screen once again. Um, or actually, the depth of field. Sorry, the camera goes closer to the end, so the text doesn't move at the end. The camera goes closer at the end. The text stays where it is. So um, basically. This is two layers of text. I actually had three, but I got rid of one of them. So this is actually two layers of text. So if I select one of these periods, so we can zoom in here, um, you can see they both have like this nice, uh, this nice like noise kind of material on them, making them look kind of rough and gr and dingy. And no it just says Warzone just because that's what I was thinking of at the time when I made it. By the way, you can say anything, of course. Um, but so the first text object is this gray one on the front. Let me turn my oh, this on. The first gray one is this gray one in the front, right? So the one that actually looks like no, one looks like this. Um, th well, this one, yeah. So that one, the one that just disappeared. That's the first one, right? So I have a font on this, just this little folder. You can select the font in the, t in the text tab, of course. Um, and what, let me open this up a little bit. The extrude is on point thirty-three, so you can see this obviously makes it bigger or smaller or longer or whatever else. So that's what that does. Um, the offset set to zero. But the, the cool thing is that if you if you take a close look, you see we have this nice beveled edge. You can turn the resolution up or down. I'm gonna actually leave it down because that looks really cool, just hard edge like that. I might do the same thing with this one. No, maybe not. Maybe not with that one. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not with that one. Oh, there we go. All right. Well. Yeah, it looks good for the front one, not for the top one. All right, cool. So, um, it, it, I have a little bit of depth on this. So, what that means is that it's not just super flat. So, if I put it on zero, and then actually, we have to pull it out now. If I put it on zero, you can see it's just hard edge. Like, it's just like, you know, there's nothing to it. But if I add a little bit of depth to it, you can see that it um, it actually gets a little rounded on the, on the corners there. Now, if we add the resolution all the way down to zero, then it gets like hard. It gets like hard, hard, like beveled, which looks really cool. So I really like the way that looks. Um, so we're gonna keep it like that. Um, and then I, of course, duplicated that by hitting Shift D on my keyboard. And then I made a black version. I just went to the Material tab here. Hit this little two button that's up here when you. It'll, it'll have like a two button or this button right here. Um, and then I just made it like darker, of course. And then for the material, both of the materials are the same exact thing, except one of them is darker. So they both have. Um, uh, 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 specular all the way up, metallic, metallic all the way up for both of them. But the cool thing is that I added this noise texture, which is super easy. Let's go ahead and drag my cursor up to the top left until it turns into a plus, and then just drag that screen in half, change the left hand side to a shader editor, and then just get rid of this panel by clicking and dragging it away. Now you can see down here, what I have is a noise texture. I hit Shift A and searched for a noise texture, and then just plop this bad boy down right here and plug the color into the roughness. The scale is on 18.5, uh, you can see what this is what it does, 18.5, details on 16, roughness is on 0.667, and distortion is on 0. This one is exactly the same, except the, I think the roughness is different. Yeah, the roughness is different, 
um, and the distortion I have all the way up on 1. Uh, 1.2, just so it has a little bit of variation to it, instead of just being like regular noise. Um, and then I parented them together, so let me get rid of this panel by clicking and dragging that away. I parented this by selecting the black one, holding down shift, selecting the white one, and then hitting control P on my keyboard and setting parent to object. And now when I grab the silver one, they all, the silver one, they all move together. Um, so that's really cool. Really, really easy. Really simple to do. And then of course I just animated it. So I had it uh, up here close to the camera and then I just moved to like frame 20. I, I hit RX and then rotated it. You know what I mean? Hit I to enter the keyframe of rotation. Then the same thing with this, flipped it around again, hit I, rota uh, rotation, and then uh, just kept moving it to where I wanted it. Um, and that's basically all for the animation of the thing. I do have a plane going across here that kind of makes a, a light go across. Like you see those little, these little lights right here, right in this area, you see those kind of going across like that. It's basically just a um, an area lamp, so I hit Shift A, and I searched for a light area. And then I just bump the power up to 14.4, um, turn shadow off, that's very important. And then, uh, and then I just animate it. So on this frame, hit I, insert location, and then I move it here. And then hit G to move it. Hit G, by the way, to move things. And then hit I, location, and then went to this one, hit I, location. And I also had to rotate a little bit if I don't, if I don't remember correctly. Yeah, if I remember correctly, I had to rotate it. So just double tap R to rotate, um, and then just I, rotation. Um, now, I have a couple of other lights around here just for like lighting purposes. So I have this one, which is lighting the center, um, another area lamp, uh, just hit shift D to duplicate that one. And then uh, I have this lamp right here, which is a fill lamp because this was really dark over here without it. See, it's super dark. Just a little tiny fill lamp. This one is a color lamp. So it like it has a nice highlight to it, obviously good because it's orange. I just changed the color from white to orange right there. That's the hex FF9C4C if you like that orange color. And then of course, uh, I have one over here, which is also another orange color. Same one, just hit Shift D, duplicate it, hit G, move it over there. <laughs> Super easy. Um, then I have a lamp back here, which I don't need, so I can get rid of that one. And I have a lamp up here, which I also don't need, because that was from something else. So those are all my lamps. Oh, sorry, one back here as well, that's also orange, um, which I don't need. So I don't need any of those. Those are for a plane that I had back there before I came up with the um, background idea. So those are all the lamps that we have um, right there. And then the, the cool, really cool part is the bullets. So you can see I have some bullets coming in here, which is essentially nothing special at all. It's kind of crazy, but trust me, it's nothing. So basically what this is, is that right here on frame 75, I hit S zero and then hit I scaling to scale it down to zero, right? But on frame, where is it? There it is, uh, right here. So you can see on this frame, the scale set to zero. On this frame, the scale set all the way up to regular size and on this frame I just hit shift D duplicated this one over so it stayed for two frames and then I got rid of it again by hitting uh, S zero and then it left clicking and hit I scale so now I, basically what's happening is that it's it, I'm putting it on scale zero so this gets it disappeared and then I'm putting it all the way back up to its full scale leaving it for a frame and then putting it back down to zero so you can't see it anymore so it looks like basically some bullets are flashing which is really cool because it's like bullet trails um, and I just basically just duplicated them so you can see I just uh, dragged the box over top of this and hit Shift D, duplicated it and put one right here, put one right here and then right here. Um, so that's really cool. So it just repeats. And then I have a second bullet object as well, which is this one right here, which is slightly at a different angle as you can see. So this one's like lower and it like kind of goes off this direction like that. And then I just did the same exact thing. So it's just the same exact thing. I just selected them, Shift D, duplicate them, put them around here, boop, boop, boop. And now when you play it all together, it looks like there's a bunch of bullets um, that are coming out of nowhere. Which just looks really, really, really cool. I really love that effect. It's so simple and so easy to do. And you can add bullets down here. You can add bullets over everywhere else. Um, of course, just hit uh, G to move it so we can actually do this. Uh, grab this one. Hit Shift D to duplicate that. Hit uh, uh, just left click to confirm that. And then, of course, I'm going to have to delete all of these because they're just going to stay down here. Uh, stay up there because they have a location keyframe for up here so it's going to pop back up there so delete that and then like maybe on f this frame right here i'll i'll do something like like this maybe maybe we'll go across i'll kind of move it up maybe a little closer to the camera this might be a little abrasive so we'll have to see i might have to get rid of this but we'll, we'll try one so i scale and we'll skip a couple frames. I'm just getting done the the the, the um the basic the, the locations of where I want the keyframes right now. I'm not actually scaling anything yet. So I scale, uh, I scale, leave it for a frame right there, and then we get rid of it on this frame. So scale, uh, uh, S zero, 
left click to confirm I scale and then on this frame actually we don't need that one on this frame I I Jesus uh, s sorry zero left click to confirm I scale and now you can see oh yeah that was good okay that's not too abrasive I don't think right so let's play this from the beginning actually or not from the beginning but after the depth of field all right comes in boom oh yeah I like that one that's nice nice and close to the camera like that I like that I appreciate that we can maybe add a couple more maybe this might be overboard but we'll see uh, drive cursor over top of that shift D duplicate maybe like three of them yeah like this this is cool I like this boom 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 I don't know about that many of them I don't know about that many of them mm, maybe just two boom boom maybe I think the problem is is that I want it to be um, up at the top for this one so let's go ahead and actually move the location so um, right here I hit I location and then hit I location and then right here I'll move it up so let's turn my keyframes on so my overlays on so I can see move it up here hit I location and then maybe rotate it a little tiny bit you can't see it because it's scaled to zero but hopefully that looks good yes that's what I'm that's what I want all right cool so when we play this back now you can see boom oh wait oh it's already moving that's why okay wait 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 pause, 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 pause. so I'll duplicate that one over and then we'll have to move it down because it's in the way like that and then we also need to rotate it back oh that's because the rotation's off all right I forgot to rotate it back for this free keyframe always remember if you're gonna rotate something you have to have a keyframe that uh, that keeps it where it was previously so I rotation duplicate that over yeah all right okay um, and then I and then G sorry uh, location and then duplicate that over okay cool there we go boom and then wait for it wait for it boom oh yeah, yeah 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 I don't know if it looks too good but you guys can see the process as to which is how I've done it I'm definitely gonna get rid of definitely gonna get rid of this 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 up close one it may, at least maybe the second one maybe just the first one boom eh, it's kind of like lasers now I don't know yeah I don't know if I like that but yeah you st you get the idea you get the idea you get the idea um, ladies and gentlemen you get the idea so yeah all right cool so I'm definitely gonna get rid of that one but I do like the ones in the back of course the, the up close ones just too abrasive it's like just too in your face um, and too big but um, but yeah so that's basically it that's all that I did and then of course we have the final the final piece which is the depth of field which is a little bit of a hassle but in the first frame here by the way my whole entire uh, uh, project is only 230 frames um, on the first frame I have the depth of field checked in the camera tab here um, I have the shift over just because this wasn't in the center, so don't mind that. Um, but the f-stop is on 0.1. That's why the depth of field is so large. Um, and then we have the focal distance on 6.9. And then I made a keyframe. Um, I don't know what this is. So this is the location keyframe, not a depth of field keyframe. Don't worry. No, no more depth of field. All right, so right here is the first depth of field keyframe. So on 101, you can see that um, the focus distance is about to change because I want to go across the text a little bit. So I changed it, and you can see it going down. And right here, I hover my cursor over top of this, hit I to make a keyframe. I put it on 6.1, and then I put my cursor over here, hit I, on, and put it on 6.9. Um, so that's how you can insert a keyframe on a value slider. Just hover your cursor over top of it and hit I. Um, and then you can see now the focal distance changes to where the word is. So now it's completely like blurry when before it was like all clear, except for the W and the E is kind of blurry as well. But you can see I wanted to shift it across again, so I did it again. So on this frame, it's on 6.1, uh, and then I went over here, hovered my cursor over top of this, changed it to 7.3, and hit I. There you go. And now it's like the, the, focus, the focus is over there. And then I moved it over here. And I don't think any of the rest of these are, are yeah, none of these are, um, none of these are depth field keyframes. So we have three depth of field, key, depth, depth of field keyframes that kind of just make it shift across the, the face of the text. So it kind of blurs it and clears it up, um, which looks really, really nice. So that's basically it. And then, of course, I moved the camera closer to the text at the end um, so that it would like loop with the beginning a little bit. Um, and just be blurry and really close up. So that's basically it. This is the entire full animation. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I love doing these kinds of animations. There's a lot of things you can do with this. I really enjoyed the idea of the bullets. I think it looks really, really cool. And to be honest with you, you could even, um, you can even match up the lamp. Which, which lamp is it? Um, this one. Yes. Yeah, you can even match up this lamp to go on and off when the bullets come in. 
which would be kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Just real quick, just to see what it looks like. So right here, I'm going to hover my cursor over power, hit I, move over one frame until the bullet comes into the frame. And then we will go ahead and hit um, I on that. And then go back to the, the other frame, turn this to zero, hit I. So now comes in, the light comes on. And then when it goes away, I'm going to put a keyframe right here. The frame before it goes away, hit I, go to the frame that goes away, changes to zero, and then hit I. So now it does like this. Oh, yeah, that looks really, really cool. So then we can just grab this and just duplicate it. So Shift D, duplicate that over. And then every single time one of them comes back, you can just duplicate this again. So there's one right there as well. And then put that there. Um, there we go. That light comes on, goes off, and then I think there's one or two more, but I'm not going to just try and do all this. But you guys get the idea. You guys get the idea. So we have the first couple ones. It looks really cool. So the light now comes on and off with the bullet. So it looks like the bullet is shining onto the text. Oh, yeah. That that really just steps it up a lot. I really enjoy that. That's very cool. So um, there it is right there, guys. You can see the, um, the light coming on and off there, which is very cool. So take a look there. There you go. That's very, very cool. And if you're interested, I have my frame rate set to 30 because I think 60 is too fast and 30 looks more cinematic for this specific render. So that is that. That is our cinematic intro. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.